Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking Camaro ZL1 1LE and this is not a car that I am reviewing. This is my car. I've been looking for one of these for a while. I was looking at the Porsche GT4, the Porsche GT3, and also the Camaro ZL1 1LE. And so I was looking at all three of those. I didn't really have a budget, but the best value and the most fun was actually the Camaro. And so I want to show you guys this. I've been looking at this for a while. And the reason I never made a video on it is because I didn't want you guys to go out there and take my deal away. So this car, this is a red Camaro and I wanted a colored one. The white ones and the black ones sell for a lot less than the colored ones, what I've noticed on the used market. So you can get a white one or a black one for about $50,000. This one, I got one owner, no accident, for $54,500. It was a total steal. It's a brand new car. I am uh, very happy with it. And I kept my mouth shut while I was looking for it because I didn't want anybody else to go out there and buy this. Uh, it's just a fantastic car. We're gonna go for a test drive in a little bit, but I wanna do a little bit of a walk around first to show you all the things that are cool about this car on the outside. Now you'll notice that unlike the supercars that I put on this channel, this has steel brakes, which means consumables, are relatively inexpensive. It also has a very serious suspension setup. If we come in here, you'll see the dampers. It actually has a coilover in there. Those are the Multimatic dampers. They are incredible. The springs are actually stiff. If you guys remember, I had that C7 that I took to the track, and those C7s are meant for old people. They're very soft. And so when I would go into the oval at the racetrack, the side of the car actually hit the ground. I posted about that the car, the side of the car on the C7 got scraped off. Uh, it didn't have serious enough spring rates. That had a magnetic suspension in it. More built for comfort than performance, those C7s. So in the future, I really hope that Chevy does more of this type of stuff because this car is simply fantastic. Coming up here to the hood, you see we have a carbon fiber hood here. And this car actually has a fair amount of options on it. It had the uh, carbon fiber dash. I think he has the window sticker up here. So you can see that even when this was new, the car was not super expensive. It was $74,000 new. So about 20,000 more than what I paid. But if you see here, we have the performance data and video recorder. We have the carbon fiber fuel door, which is $280. We have the carbon fiber panel molding here, and we have navigation. Uh, the navigation, which is great. We like having that navigation PDR all in there. So this is your $280 fuel door. It's a little crazy that that costs that much money, but take a look at these tires. These are actually a semi slick tire from the factory. And these tires are actually supposed to be really good. So this is pretty much turnkey ready to go. I'm going to align it and then I'm going to take it to the racetrack and see how it does. Take a look in the trunk. Chevy's marketing materials said that the rear seat doesn't fold down and actually there's a hidden button in here So if I press this I can fold down the rear seat There you are so I can put my dog in the car, which is cool the tires on here are very wide We have a 325 width tire in the back. And I think a 305 up front. Yeah, 305 a bunch of cooling on this, so this will not have the problems that the Z06 had. The front end is very mean. You can see that the Chevy emblem is hollow also for airflow. We pop the hood, we see that we have an LT4 in here. It's the same engine that's in the Corvette Z06, and you also have adjustable camber plates here, so we can add camber from the factory. But everything in here looks brand new, because it is pretty much a new car. We have a Rotofab intake, and we also have a Cooks exhaust on this. And those are the only two modifications on the car. So you can see it's a muffler delete. If we go under here, you can also see how clean everything is. This car does not look like it's seen any weather. All right, so let's move on to the inside. We have, most notable, a heated steering wheel. It's very luxurious. Heads-up display, just like the Corvette. Six speed manual transmission. That's one less speed than the Corvette I had. Recaro seats, these seats are very comfortable, but they don't have a ton of adjustability. See, I'm a little bit limited there. So these wings don't adjust, but they fit me pretty well. I would imagine if you're overweight, this would be a little bit tough to squeeze into. Everything is actually pretty nice. 
this is the screen up here. We have PDR navigation, of course, and your air conditioning controls. This shuts off your vent. This opens it. This does temperature, heated seats, cooled seats. The mirrors here, it has the blind spot detection. That was one feature that you see in a lot of modern cars that was absent from the Corvette. And it's kind of like, what are you doing, Chevy? But they did put it in this, which is very important because I think the visibility in this is actually worse than my C7. But yeah, check out this back seat. I can actually fit my dog back there. All right, let's get started. This is what my key looks like. It's a pretty basic looking key, Chevy key, kind of boring. There is no remote start because this is a manual transmission. I'm gonna throw that in there. You can hear that exhaust and it really sounds nice. The clutch on here is super light, which is impressive for how much horsepower this thing has. It has 650 horsepower, 650 foot-pounds of torque, and I also have a rear view camera here so I can see if I'm going to hit the dog. I actually flew out to Nevada to pick this car up. I flew into Nevada yesterday, Halloween, purchased the car, and then drove it home. And I actually was filming with the new GoPro and I did the night sequence when I was driving home on the freeway and the sunset looked really cool. And I'm really impressed with the camera. I'm actually filming with it right now as well. The low light is much better than my old cameras, so it should make a notable difference when I get out to the racetrack. The video quality should be improved. Now, the most interesting thing about this car is that it doesn't have a lot of safety to it. So like, if I mash the gas pedal, it will just spin the tires. So if I mash it right now, it just slips. It doesn't take off. So what I like to do actually is I like to turn off traction control. These people are not happy with me. Nobody likes this car. It's it's super obnoxious. You will get dirty looks in this car. I'm not even going over the speed limit, but I'm getting dirty looks. It's very loud, very obnoxious, belongs on the racetrack. So yeah, I'm not gonna daily drive this car or anything, but Anyways, to get traction, what I'll do is I'll spin the tires a little bit and then I will uh, launch it and it will hook up. So there's a lot of people that complain about the traction with these Goodyears, but they're actually great tires. You just have to learn how to drive. This is not a car for someone who doesn't know how to drive. If you do know how to drive and you're used to high horsepower cars, totally dangerous cars, this is right up your alley. It's so much fun. I'm just waiting for these people to pass. So what I would what I would recommend doing, if I want to launch it here, is I would so get the tires a little bit warm like that, and then you go for it. So then it hooks. It's that easy. I mean, it's not that easy. You need to know how to drive. You can really. <laughs> You can take this thing right into a tree, like... It's got so much power, like I have to modulate the throttle, I can't just... You can't just mat it. If you mat it, you're gonna be toast. You better be quick with the steering wheel because this thing rips. Now, when I was driving home from Nevada, I went the windy way and I was able to get the tires warm and I was able to go very fast and Wow, there is so much confidence in this car. It just sticks to the road, hooks up. It's a fantastic car, and then it stops. When you ask it to stop, it stops. And man, if you have the opportunity to drive one of these things in anger, you gotta do it because I feel like a lot of the reviews on this car miss the point. People complain about it being too stiff. You know, this car actually has solid bushings. so much fun so much fun I have so much control so much control it's just a fantastic car now on top of this on top of how well it drives right now I haven't even put an aggressive alignment on it I haven't really dialed it in at all it has 3,000 miles on it but when I get it out to the racetrack I will be putting race pads on it and I'll be testing different setups 
uh, tuning the adjustable sway bar. That was another thing that the Corvette didn't have. It did not have an adjustable sway bar. And so I remember at one of the tracks I was at, I had to disconnect the sway bar because the rear tires were, were slipping too much. And yeah, this is just gonna be a ton of fun to get out there and tune. It's all set up to get out there and tune. So just a great car overall.